Good evening, Victory Tribe, and welcome to Victory Now. Hello, my name is Michelle Repke, and I am a student here at Victory School of Ministry. And tonight, I want to share with you about being word dependent. So I looked up the word dependent, and just to get a little view on that, it means to rely on something or someone. And so if you can picture a newborn baby um, as it comes home with its parents, it is totally relying upon those parents to take care of it. It relies on its parents to feed it, to nurture it, um, to take it to the doctor's office, whatever has to be done, this baby relies upon its parents to help with all of its needs until it's to a certain age to where it can take care of itself. But tonight, I want us to look at the Word of God as being that parent, just as a child would look to the parent. Because our lives around us, everything around us is changing. Everything seems like it's hanging in a balance right now, whether we're going to be, you know, the same next year as we will be in two months. Everything is changing. And it's just really people are looking now, will their lives be steady? Will their lives um be in full force or will their lives just fall short so tonight i want to share with you a little bit like how god showed this to me about being word dependent is in ezekiel ezekiel the children of israel come into a land where everything was furnished for them. They didn't have to work. They didn't have to get all these things together. They didn't have a mortgage. God had provided for them. And as they get into this place, there's nations all around them. And God had given them a system to go by so that their lives could be healthy and whole. And when the world looked at their lives, they would be able to tell that they were different, that they were a God people. And it was the systems that he set up in their life that made them look different. And But as the children of Israel was going through their lives, they started seeing these nations. And for some reason, these nations looked better than them. And they decided that they were going to try their systems mixed with their own. And so therefore, the children of Israel began to look just like all the nations around them. And so if you think about a newborn too, the newborn, when it's in its mother's belly, is supported by the umbilical cord. Uh, oxygen, nutrients comes to this newborn through this umbilical cord. And so the children of Israel, as they were looking at these nations, begin to cut themselves off from their true source of life, and that was God their Father. And so... What I want to take us through is just being word dependent and not world dependent because the children of Israel began to look at the world and reach out in places that was not good for them. They thought that they were increasing by reaching out for these other things, but they were actually decreasing. And so... The nations that they were looking at begin to crumble and they looked at them like they were, you know, this these big time had it all together. But these nations around them begin to crumble and they weren't as steady as what they thought. And so our dependency should always be upon Jesus or the word, because we know in John, John says that the word became flesh and Jesus was that word. And so the creation is never meant to be our source, but is meant to be good for our daily lives. The creator was meant to be our source and the word that he's given to us, the systems that he's given to us. If you look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 25, it says, But the word of the Lord endures forever. And 
there's no end to that word. Their material things that we have with us now has expiration dates on it. Money, the value of money, you know, is probably decreasing. And so, but the word of the Lord endures forever. When our bodies go on to go to the place that it's going, um, the word of the Lord will continue to go. As the world goes on, the word will never decrease. Psalms 12 verse 6 says, The promises of the Lord can be trusted. They are genuine as silver refined seven times in the furnace. The word has been tested and it has proved itself over the years. What it says is true. We can trust what God tells us because it's been here for a very, very, very long time. And it has not decreased, but it has went on. Different translations of this verse, Psalms 12, 6, says that the word of the Lord is flawless. The word of the Lord is pure. The word of the Lord can be trusted. The word of the Lord is sure. And the word of the Lord is absolutely reliable. Nothing, no one could ever defect the word of the Lord. Nothing could penetrate. In other words, it can't sneak its way into the word and change it. The word of the Lord will stand no matter how big the test is, how big the trial is, big or small, the word will work and it always will. When you look into the word and you believe it, you're going to start looking like it. So if you imagine a pool that's filled with red dye and you jump into this pool, you're going to leave red. Probably not a spot of your skin is not going to be touched by this red dye. And it's the same with the word. When you jump into the word and you trust the word and God completely, you're going to go out looking just like him. The more word time that you get, the more it will start dripping off of you and leaving a path as you go. So if you picture yourself jumping into this pool of red dye, when you get out, you're going to leave a trail of red behind you. And if you start touching things with that red hand, now you're going to leave prints behind. So as the word starts getting into you, wherever you go, you're going to start leaving a trail of word behind you and as you go and you start touching you're going to leave start leaving the word with others the dramatic change that the word brings in your life is going to bring an automatic want to share with others because the word of God is the only thing that can bring us out of darkness out of prisons and so as we allow the word to do what only the word can do. It's going to cause this effect on the inside of us to want to see others set free. So you can see the word is something that is vital in our lives that we need in our lives because of everything changing so much. The word of God, like first Peter chapter one, verse 25 said it endures forever. Hmm. So how do we allow this word to be where we're dependent upon this word? What I have found is I take scriptures and I personalize them. I start making these scriptures as if they that God had written them just for me. Kind of like if you would take Philippians 319, which is a very well-known verse. Um, this is how I would read it. 
and God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And I love the part how it says in God. It doesn't say me. I'm not the one providing. It's God that's providing. So I become dependent upon this verse when God says, okay, I'm going to supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. I am taking that and I am saying that's mine and I become dependent upon that. And when a need comes, I say, all right, I have a word from the Lord and I can trust that God is for me. He's not against me. He's never going to forsake me. He's never going to leave me. That's what the word says. And so the more I lean into that and trust it, the more I'm going to see these promises manifest in my life. So tonight I want to encourage you to be word dependent and not to be looking to the world to be your source right now through all these changing times, but to allow God to speak his word into your life and listen to that word and believe that word and trust just as the baby is trusting the parents to take care of them. God is going to take care of us. So I bless you in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm.